record. You know, when we hear some of this rhetoric, I do think it disturbs uh, some people. You know, when we hear stuff about how we have to protect ourselves from foreign domination and we have to maintain our cultural sovereignty, the idea that, you know, Canadian culture is this, like, fragile thing that, like, the evil foreigners are going to corrupt and sort of erode us. You know, that, to me, is the kind of rhetoric you associate with, like, Viktor Orban's Hungary or something, right? And I don't think that a progressive democratic country like Canada wants to set the roadmap to regulating the Internet that can then be adopted by the Viktor Orbans of the world. You know, because what's to prevent an authoritarian government from sort of saying, like, well, we want to protect our cultural sovereignty, too, and that's why we need to regulate YouTube and make sure that only good patriotic, you know, content is seen and we'll, you know play around with the algorithm to ensure that only the sort of patriotic content that we believe our people should see will get boosted in their feeds and their subscriber counts and all that kind of stuff. This is a real sort of old-fashioned way of thinking about Canada and thinking about Canadian culture that I personally do not have a lot of time for and I think is increasingly just a very dated um, sort of premise of thinking about culture that most YouTubers uh, just do not conceptualize in the same way. Like, they don't think I'm making content in order to preserve some fragile idea of Canadian sovereignty. They think I'm making a cooking video, I'm making a fitness tutorial, I'm making a DIY video, you know. I make videos that are about specifically Canadian stuff, but there's tons of Canadian uh, YouTubers who have been successful by just making the kind of content that they think there's an audience for. Sometimes that audience is Canadian, sometimes that audience is international, but you know, Canadians, I don't know, we're a very diverse people, and we've got a lot of different interests, and I think that the great thing about YouTube and new media is that it allows Canadians to create the kind of content they want for a market that they believe exists. They sink or swim based on the popularity of, of that, and it's true what one of the, the other fellows said, which is that, you know, there are a lot of failed uh, Canadian YouTubers, there's a lot of failed Canadian actors. Nobody is guaranteed success in the cultural realm, but I just think that YouTube is a marvelous um, case study of how you can be an independent Canadian content creator and achieve, you know, wealth and success and fame and all of the sorts of things that creatives want, you know, without government regulation, without subsidies, without mandates and CanCon requirements and all of this kind of stuff. So what I'm sort of saying is that I do think that we need to kind of get away from this. Like, if old media wants to still live under that regime, that's fine. But to me, as a new media creator, when I hear about talk of, like, protecting our culture from foreign domination and how we need government sort of paternalistic hand to ensure that YouTube will be more patriotic and more Canadian and that consumers of YouTube will only watch the right sorts of videos. You know, that kind of stuff gets my backup and gets the backup of a lot of Canadian content creators who don't want to be told what kind of content that they have to make.